Welcome to Podcast Land. Welcome to Podcast Land. This episode's about substitute teachers, but... I was a sub upon one part of my life. I'm actually a liar. So I've said that I've taught Early Head Start. That's a lie. Legally speaking, I was a substitute of Early Head Start. This is lore. Yeah. So for the first couple weeks, I was truly a sub. Like I just showed up and they were like, go here, go there. And then they realized that I am on time to work every day and am just genuinely a responsible person. So then I got a soft promotion, which is where you get more responsibility, but no pay bump. And I became like the maternity leave sub because we had three teachers have babies that year. So then I would be in the room every day with the same kids for months at a time. So I ended up with the one classroom that I had for over five months. So to me, I was teaching. No, you 100% were. I mean, subs are totally teachers. I was a sub too. And I feel like when you're a substitute teacher at like a school that you really like, it's like hacking the mainframe to get into the school. Because sometimes it's like legit hard to get into certain districts or like sites or whatever can't relate to that but I do believe you every school I've ever worked at has had the biggest red flag of like can you start tomorrow type of energy that's because you're so good yeah and they have red flags (laughs) (laughs) it's crazy though because like when I find I'm sure you're the same way when I would find a good sub it's like I go feral I'm like you're mine don't you dare take anybody else's phone call. I got a great <laughs> sub the other day. I was like, so what is your cell phone number and home address? Just <laughs> just wondering. And she was like re- eager to give me her info because the way it works in my district is you kind of have to find your own sub. But if you don't, they will find one. But if you never find one for yourself, like people are going to start to get annoyed at you. So like if it's an emergency, the principal will find somebody. But if you know you're going to be out, it's just kind of the nice thing to do to find someone. So I wanted to take down her info because I'm new here. So I don't really know anybody else. And I really liked her. And she was the sub for my co-teacher. So I was in there with her. And she was like so involved, was helping the kids with their work, taking all the initiative. And I was like, stop right there. I am obsessed with you. I realized she's very eager because she just got this job. And she was a stay-at-home mom for a really long time. So this is like she's trying to re-enter the workforce. And I was like, let me harness all that energy. I want you in here every day (laughs) that's what I'm trying to do there's a district by my house that like I really like but it's hard to get hired there do they know you're literally famous like not to pull that fucking card but like are you joking right now I actually think that does not help I think it actually (laughs) fully hinders me are you gonna tell them I never do me either I go into those interviews and I don't say shit it's a fun mouse tool that'll help us later (laughs) I I asked a few years ago like a very very famous teacher Instagrammer and they were like I never say anything they were like would you if you worked at Domino's be like by the way I have this after school job like no you wouldn't that's the way that I view it I wouldn't tell you if I was like bartending at Applebee's on the weekend right so this is the same as that even though it's obviously not but to me it is I just (laughs) at this district I would be going through the district to be a sub but obviously I also work for a subbing agency on their social media side and I, I've, I've used that as a teacher and I really liked it because when you have like a little app with your school, like you can just click and be like place assignment and then the subs will pick your job up. I definitely like I see why that should be used because at my school we're using like messenger pigeons and email and text message. So. It's horrible. When I was at my last school, they had literally a one pager. It was like very clearly Xeroxed from many, many years ago. And it was like name, number, email. But like there had been white out and rewritten over in handwriting and Xeroxed again. And, and like it was a mess and a I, half. Can I just say one thing I love about the education system that I never got in corporate America is I love a vintage form. Oh, I yeah. love when you tell me to fill out a form and I look at that and it, it's grainy. It's crooked. There's a white out chunks that you can tell were on the original copy. I love a form that looks like that. It's not fillable online at all in any no. way, shape, or form. It's actually a PNG, not even a PDF. Oh, it's a JPEG. <laughs> it's like a, it's grainy. And then they printed that and that's what we sign. Oh, mm-hmm. love it. Love it. I do love that. You know what else I love? This is a, such a, again, the train has left the station and gone <laughs> elsewhere. But there's two things that I really love about working with veteran teachers. One is they make the construction paper folders for you. 
And I forgot oh, that those existed. I forgot about that completely. Love that. And then you open the folder and inside is my second favorite thing. It's like a craft from the 90s. Like a lesson they have been teaching since the dawn of time. Oh, it makes me feel so warm and fuzzy. This is the PD we need. I don't <laughs> care about whatever math program you spent $10,000 on. I want to learn how to make the construction paper folder. Yes. Hello. So, um... Back to something. So I got that like list, right? The very clearly visually ancient list. And I would be making my way through it. And on that list, there were like maybe four subs that actually subbed. And the rest of them were like a disconnected number or they don't work there anymore. They haven't in or years. Or they're like, oh, I only work Tuesdays from 8 to 10 a.m., which like valid. That's the subbing life. But uh, valid for you, inconvenient for me. Have a great day. Because I have like four options, right? So like that's it was really stressful. And then, of course, the subs are all booked but the secret is you know your own subs i mean people outside of the teaching world they don't realize that we find our own subs the vast majority yes. of the time and it varies by district some at my old district we did not find our own subs you could request a certain sub and if they were like cool with it and you told them in advance to show up that day they would give them to you but it was like not the norm at all but also there we didn't really have subs and usually they would just leave the kids alone which is illegal right because that's the whole other thing it's like if you don't have a sub in high school you just leave children but it's just i don't know it's also hard because you just don't know who's coming in the room it gives me a lot of anxiety oh my god i know i had a sub once in kindergarten who took facetime calls at the back table while making my ia teach the class that's not even that bad I was expecting you to say a lot worse than that. I was just like, why are you on a video chat in a room full of kindergartners? Like, what are you doing? Are you live on TikTok right now? Oh my God, imagine if they were ice cream. Yum, yum. <laughs> I haven't had that many bad sub experiences because like I said, at my old school, they would just leave the children alone. There was one time that a sub gave away a bunch of my raffle snacks because the kids convinced them that that was allowed, which they're pretty convincing. I'm not even gonna, whatever. They're great gaslighters. Everyone makes mistakes. I wasn't that mad about it. And there wasn't that much left to begin with. So I was whatever. Um, But one time when I was a student in high school, we had this sub frequently. Like he was in there every single day. uh, So I had him in more than one class. And he would just loudly lick his lips and play online poker the whole day what and I remember being like 14 and I was like okay I know you're a sub but I also know there's like isn't gambling like illegal in some places I like I couldn't tell why but I knew that that wasn't right a lot of subs come in and try to rule with an iron fist and my kids have never responded well to that they gobble them up they're like I don't know what you thought this was, but someone lied to you several times. A sub at my last school, she was a middle school teacher. So she came in and tried to middle school teach my third graders with like old school techniques. Immediately. And I was like, this is bad. I was in the building that day, though. I was downstairs. So I could come upstairs and be like, guys, be nice to the new the new person who is yelling at you. (laughs) Please follow the social (laughs) script that you are not aware of and have never followed. If you could pick it up right now. Yeah. Um, I was a sub before I taught and I felt like it helped so much because you do go into those classrooms and get eaten alive. Yeah. Like being the person that's new and you don't know the routine and you don't know the vibes is not a fun circumstance to be in. Every day. Really? Like I hated that for me. I'm hating that for you guys. It's not fun. Mm -mm. I feel like it's like working on an oil rig. Like it's a job and it's worked by people, but no person in that job is like, I'm having the time of my life, really. I always like sing the praises of subbing before you full time teach. Not because it's like easy or fun. It's good if you have like a inconsistent schedule. That's how I started it is because I was finishing college and I only had classes two days a week. So I couldn't get like a nine to five or like a full time anything. And generally, because most places are desperate for subs, you can literally go in there and be like, I'm free on Tuesday mornings alone. Mm -hmm. And they will be like, perfect. We'll call you every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I was subbing when I was a student teacher. Oh my God, Volt. He's acting like he's never eaten before in his life. Um, I was a student teacher, so at my student teaching assignment, they also needed subs. And what I would do was I got my emergency credential, and then because the elementary school's academic calendar didn't line up with my college's academic calendar, if I had a week off from school, I would sub. Oh, like your spring break, your, Mm -hmm. your various times. I liked it. It just was like... 
a lot, but I did feel way prepared when I went to my first day. I was like, well, at least these kids are mine and I know You're what's like, going and I've on. met a child. I've met a child. <laughs> I know a child. Have you seen that TikTok of that male sub at an elementary school where the kids are like literally obsessed with him? No. This is one of the times that I'm okay with a teacher who TikToked at school because I don't think he anticipated this going viral and it's his face. No. You can just hear the kids. He looked like he was like fresh out of college. He looked young and he was a sub at an elementary school. And you know how elementary school kids are with male teachers? Literally, he's walking into the lunchroom. It sounds like Beyonce walked in. Like they're screaming and clapping. And they're like, he's here. He's here. And all the kids are like running up to him. And he's like, you guys, you're going to get me in trouble. And I just really wish I could have seen all the other staff members' faces in that video. Because imagine you're having like a Wednesday from hell. And then this random sub that got hired three days ago walks in and hundreds of children start scream applauding for him. Do you think it's because like the young male teacher effect? That's, That's what I thing. think it was. He made a video like following up I and I loved it. I, it seemed very wholesome. He like played with them at recess. I think that's more what it was, was like he said he was like playing sports with them. And like going crazy with them at recess. Oh, they love that. So I think that was more like I think he built that reputation. And then like all the other kids like, you know, schools, word's going to travel fast that there's a new male sub and he's playing football, tackle football at recess. Like if you're at the right school site and if you really want to be like, I think you can be involved mm -hmm. as much or as little as you want. Like, you really can like kind of make yourself part of that culture. And that's what my maternity sub was. He was like a rock star and he was always around it was like he was a co-worker even though he didn't technically work with us he was there every day mm -hmm. the subs that travel from school site to school site those are the strongest soldiers for real oh my god like as if going into a new classroom is not terrifying enough you're going into a whole new building you don't even know where to park just dealing with parking every day would be enough to put me in the hospital from stress so we asked you about your experiences with subs. I wasn't really very specific about it at all. I like being not specific. I think it opens the door to creativity. Amen, sister friends. Also, while you're looking, let me tell a story because I'm very excited about this. And also, it's an ad for myself. Amazing. So speaking of subs, I'm trying something new in my classroom. I haven't started it yet. I'm going to start it probably next week where I'm giving them classroom jobs. And I'm going to put it on Teachers Pay Teachers because it was a very big pain in the ass to make it. And so... It's already done, so you can have it too. I have an application process. They have employment contracts with the like steps determination. I'm really trying to like make them see what having a real job is like, but like not make it as capitalistic as possible. Like I want them, I want it to be like all responsibility and no suffering under capitalism. Because every time I've seen classroom jobs, it's like, you have to rent your desk. And I just really <laughs> don't like that. <laughs> because like you can you can just be in this space without having to perform labor. Like it's literally fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So there's like six or seven classroom jobs. So not everybody has one. So you have to apply and really like write a paragraph applying, telling me why you want this job. So I had to figure out what do we do if a kid is absent? Like if you're absent oh. and you have a job, where does that leave us? So what I decided, the kids who have the job get extra credit. It varies depending on the job. So like the jobs that are hard work, you get more extra credit. So their sub mm -hmm. procedure is if they... Don't tell anyone. It's literally fine. We'll get through it. But if they do pick a sub, their sub will get raffle tickets. Oh, so my whichever God. Friend they tell to do take over their job for the day gets tickets. That's the way the cookie crumbles. That's what happens. I'm trying to make it as realistic of real life work. Like if you have an emergency and you call out and you don't say anything, it'll be fine. It's literally fine. But if you know you're going to be out, tell a friend. Right? Absolutely. Get a sub. Call your sub on your Xerox piece of paper. <laughs> so this person, this is the reason that I pitched this episode. This person said, girl, I'm going to shoot my shot here because I would really love to hear a teacher quit talk episode about how lonely subbing can be. I feel like it's a part of the beginning stage of this career that nobody really talks about. 
I typed this as I'm sitting at the desk of a teacher whose school I'm in once a week and three times last week talked to someone in the lunchroom who, when I walked in this afternoon, asked me if I was new to subbing. I want to give you a high five. You're doing a great job. And also, like, I will grant, I don't think there's a villain in this story. Like, I've been so overwhelmed teaching that I, like, have not given people the professional respect I probably should have. So try not to take it personal. But I know that shit hurted. I both would be devastated by that and also absolutely I would done. be a perpetrator and a victim. Yeah. Either or. I can see myself in. Did I, I told you this story a long time ago, but remember the girl who I, because I, when I'm like overwhelmed, I don't remember faces. Like I can't yeah. remember places that I've been or faces. I can't remember names at all. Oh, ever. it's so bad. Well, I was at this thing. My ex-boyfriend had taken me to like this performance that he did. And this girl came up to me and I was like, oh, hi, I'm Ariel. Nice to meet you. And she was like, you literally met me 15 minutes ago, but I guess I wasn't that important or memorable to you. And she said that in front of a group of people. Okay, well, that's also kind of a fucking insane thing to say. I I mean, you've never made a mistake. Jesus, that's it. That's what I would have said to her in the moment, too. I'm not saying that everyone (laughs) in Los Angeles in the theater scene is the kindest person I've ever met, but I felt really bad. But yeah. I'm so excited to um, go back and do subbing, which sounds crazy. Really? I would never. I am. I'm really stoked. I could never and I would never. I want to do it next year for a few days a week. There are a lot of people. And like I said, especially if you have like a weird schedule, if you have kids in school, if you whatever, there's a lot of people who make a career out of it. I have Reddit threads about subbing if you want me to read them. Um, This title of it is, I did substitute teaching for nine days and am quitting. <laughs> I did substitute teaching for nine days and I am quitting. I don't know how anyone can do teaching, period. Mood. I knew it was hard, but I had no idea it was this level of difficult. I had classes with various grades at three different schools and it was all pretty bad. The the young kids just scream and cry all day and don't even try to get any work done. The kids that do try are interrupted by the other kids being so loud. I try and calm the kids down, but they don't listen. With middle school and high school, they just yell all day. They use their phones all day and when they use their computers, they just watch YouTube. It's so much chaos and noise and I'm only getting paid $14 an hour hour. I live in central Florida, so that's nothing here. I thought maybe I could make a difference or something or it would be a rewarding experience. Again, I knew this was hard, but I didn't know it would be this bad. So I'm just throwing in the towel. I understand why full-time teachers stay because they get benefits, but there's no point at all to be a sub. I'm just finding something else. I can work some retail store and deal with less trouble and get the same pay. To all of you that have been in this for years, I salute you. You are truly a special type of people and I have nothing but respect for you all. I take you all in your position seriously. Unfortunately, society and everyone does not. Maybe I just get stressed out too easy, easily, but I don't see how anyone could do this. Thank you for your service, but this is not for me. I got to say that is a perfect exemplar of why you need to sub like jury duty. Yes. Get your ass in that classroom. Yes. When I would have parents come for just a field trip day or a, a class party, those people would leave and come back to me with such re- deep respect. They would be like, wow you are amazing you qualify for sainthood they're (laughs) They're like they're all looking at me why are they all looking at me at the same time why are they going in different directions and and yelling and why are they yelling at me who's a celebrity that you want to see be a substitute teacher i want to see mark cuban i think he would be surprisingly good and i'm curious he can command a room. Gordon Ramsay would also be very good for that reason. Gordon Ramsay is fucking phenomenal with kids. Have you seen Junior Sh- Master Chef Junior? Don't watch Master Chef Junior unless you want to fall in love with Gordon Ramsay. That's all. A hundred percent. Somebody the other day was like, "You should do a gentle parenting Gordon Ramsay video," and I was like, "No, baby." He no, he knows. He knows. The way I love when people on TikTok splice clips of him talking to adults to him talking with kids because an adult will literally get a third degree burn on their arm, and he's like. You fucking loser. Try harder. (laughs) And then a kid starts crying over absolutely nothing. And he's like, take a deep breath. It's all going to be okay. You are capable. He's a nice man. And his daughter's on TikTok too. Anyways, this is not really what this is about. (laughs) This is a submission that says, OMG, subbing is the worst. Kid fought in hall and then came to my class to see slash hang out with his girlfriend. He refused to leave. I called the office and they said to put him on the phone so they could tell him to go to the office. He told them no. I said, 
Are you going to send someone down? They said no and to call back if he gives any more trouble. And I said, he just got in a fist fight in the hallway and he's not actually supposed to be in my class right now. That is disruptive. <laughs> yes, it is. I like how they said, call us back. And you were like, so ring, me ring. again. Not going to bother hanging up. <laughs> Ring, ring. I would have started playing like the iPhone alarm noises into the phone. They still said they couldn't spare anyone to come get him. I was worried he would be violent towards me since I'm small and female and he towered over me and was defiant about everything I asked him to do. <laughs> as two small females. As, that's hilarious. As a small female <laughs> that has had a student I do not know who is not supposed to be in my class causing problems in my class. Oh, I don't know. Within the last 48 hours. <laughs> I can relate about how you felt nervous. Do not show it. No. Do not Listen. show the nerves. In that moment, you are the highest ranking official. In the United States. You gotta dissociate. Never back down, never surrender. As two people under five three were the authority. Never back down, never what? Surrender! <laughs> you good. You can. So <laughs> been there. Yeah, Retreat. Girl, it says like leave or sit or tell me your name, you know, whatever. Oh, they like didn't even introduce themselves. When they won't tell you their name, that's the fear that that strikes into me because oh you God. know you know that I have no recourse. I'm gonna start taking pics next time a kid does that. I'm gonna go okay, smile, <laughs> figure this shit out. <laughs> I remember the first time in my third grade classroom that a child was like defiant <laughs> this child just stood in the middle of the room and stared at me and would not respond to me would not move and I was like shit I don't want to get into a power struggle right now but like I actually have no idea and that's when it gets really scary because you realize they could mutiny you in a second no like when you realize it's just me and you babe like it's really and all the kids are watching to see what you'll do and you're mm -hmm. like I can't yell at you because that's like I, I can't be in a power struggle with a, an eight-year-old yeah for sure never yell I just completely agree I eventually was like I just taught around him that's what I was about to say I would ignore that because I feel like I feel like that's attention seeking behavior so ignore he ended up putting a backpack over top of his head and walking around the classroom like that for a while and I was like friends we're just gonna keep on doing our thing what I always say is I don't know what blank is doing but we are talking about westward expansion yeah it was very interesting when I say we'll talk about this later it's less for you and more for me to figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do I need to make <laughs> several phone calls so I will talk to you about this later I literally called his mom and I was like so he's very strong-willed um and I was just wondering what you do at home with him when he I was just having that. an experience and I was wondering if you ever have experiences and if you yeah. wanted to chat about that and I would love yeah. to know what you do when you're experiencing things because at the end of the day here's what I did I did almost nothing but we need to do something so maybe we could do something together anyways you don't have that luxury when you're a sub you don't know their parents <laughs> you can't even log in and see and the office is like actually go fuck yourself we should have an office person on here because I know y'all be dealing with some stuff and I think that y'all are very isolated I would love uh, it's like they're isolated but also hold the keys to the castle you know what I mean extremely powerful so I our front office um, employee who is incredible if you're listening she asked me to help her with something on her computer and within five minutes of being up there I wanted the floor to swallow me I was so overstimulated the phone was ringing the principal Principal was radioing her, a parent walked in, a kid asked for a band-aid, like so much happened. And then she had to like make the little dismissal announcement, like so much was going on. She was talking to bus people and I was like, I'm so glad I can be here for you in this moment, but also I never want to be here again. No, for real. It's a lot in there. So just know if we ever shade the office staff on here, we're really shading the education system. Not you, personally. I can't even imagine a scenario where we would. Well, I mean, like what we're saying, oh, the office left them alone. Oh. Like they called the office and no one did anything. <laughs> like Oh, that. I'm, in my mind, I was like, the secretary is not going to come up. But like if they but that's who's picking up the phone a lot of times, you know, yeah. so that's why I feel bad. I feel like they get yelled at for things that are outside of their control. That's a good point. Yes. So I just wanted to give them some love because I know y'all be getting screamed at. Screamed at. And so much is going on. Um, so this person says at one point. Oh, no. At one point I was like, OK, you can stay, but you have to sit down. And he was refusing and angry. 
Since the office wouldn't send anyone, I decided to just ignore him and go on with a lesson. He kept making fun of others, trying another fight and hanging all over his girlfriend. I went to go call the office again and he just wandered out of the room. I let them know he was in the hall now and they could figure out where he went after that because I was done. Crazy times. I would have gotten the ick if I was that girlfriend. Like, I would have been like, that's your man? Like, depending how your old man? high schooler was. Are you going to stick by that? Honey, oh my no. God. I love when stuff like that happens between couples and I can be like, dump him. <laughs> dump him. <laughs> Boo. Do you want to read your Reddit one? Yes, I have a few of them. This one, I feel so bad for you. This was posted 23 hours ago and just know that like I'm with you during these dark times and I think <laughs> we need to have a long hard thought about the situation you're in. So the title of it is I'm constantly being questioned and it says 21 year old male with braces who's new to subbing and I'm founding myself facing constant challenges while I'm subbing in high school more specifically the high school I graduated from security repeatedly stopped me for walking the halls without a pass I encountered hostility in the teacher break room for multiple teachers who questions my presence there teachers and students and some teachers even question my education prompting me to laugh it off and to laugh it off and respond with my favorite line, yes, I did graduate and have four college degrees to prove it because they have an AA that they got when graduating high school and then did two separate programs, which got them two other AAs. And then they have their bachelor's in secondary education for biology. Oh my God. I feel really bad for this person and just wanted us all to send them some good vibes. And I think I am so rarely one to say give up on your dreams, but I think maybe we work at like a Chipotle till the braces come off my brother. Like you'll make the same amount of money. They have health insurance. <laughs> This one said, I subbed in college, wasn't even an ed education major, was never certified or anything. They put me in all the rooms the regular subs didn't want to go to anymore because those rooms had such bad behavior problems. The first time I had a room by myself was flag day and we were marching in a parade through town. I had three kids, kids in that class that were escape risks and the kids didn't get along so much that they all had a specific order that they all walked down the hall in to keep kids who didn't get along with... <laughs> each other away from each other <laughs> i'm just laughing because that speaks to my soul mood i was also the long-term <laughs> sub for the speech path while they were on maternity leave again wasn't a speech path major the other speech path who happened to be my mom made my therapy plans and i just followed them for the one and a half months that i did that job looking back i was so desperate for a job because they definitely did not pay me enough to put up with that no, there's no way that they did. Also, the legality, I'm questioning. I mean, who am I? You Aren't know? we always questioning the legality? <laughs> I'm sensing a theme on Teacher Quit Talk. <laughs> so many days I question the legality of what I've heard, said, and experienced. When I learned about ratio, my mind was blown. I was like... I said, they make laws about this? I was like, so my class size <laughs> is illegal? And they're like, well, you have to do what you have to do. And I'm like, but... You made me a mandated reporter and then made me do illegal things. They said, that's that's the name of the game, baby. We didn't say to mandate what. Who watches the Watchmen, Queen? <laughs> God. Do you want more Reddit? Yeah, why not? Okay. I want to hide during lunch. I sub at a private school where we have to eat with the students, grades six through eight. I have terrible anxiety and the entire lunch period makes me extremely anxious and sick. Today I'm with eighth grade. There's <laughs> just the way that these... The subs are talking about teaching is so funny to me. Today I'm with eighth grade. There's nine of them. They're huge. I will struggle with sitting with them because the table is barely big enough. And then I sit there as they all talk to each other and I just awkwardly eat. I mean, I try and make conversation when I can, but middle schoolers don't really care about adults at this age. I'm so tempted to just hide in the classroom. Nobody would notice, I doubt. But if they did, I could probably say I wasn't feeling good. I don't know. I'm miserable. That is literally terrible. Apparently the person, someone asked them, is there a table nearby with other teachers sit? Just sit there. And they said, no, all teachers have to sit at a table with their students. That's so awkward. That's so bad. Picturing that is like how I think a lot of people feel when they're like, oh, I see an old person at a table. Like I'm sad for them. Like I know that with age, I give a fuck less and less when I'm by myself. I'm just like, I just want to be alone. Can you guys just leave me be? But a teacher 
at a middle school table eating their lunch and being unable to go anywhere that is tragic and like i kind of feel bad for the kids too because like lunch is the time where they get to just like be their little weird selves and they're not around an authority figure so like it seems like this is good for no one and someone who is in a suit and doesn't interact with kids thought of it that's what this is radiating nail on the head as usual misredacted it's always someone in a suit who's not around kids always we got to get less of those people around here (laughs) let's get rid of the suits um this one says okay so i just started subbing a few months ago the first assignment i took was a half day for an elementary school as the art teacher the second grade class that day was very loud and very busy pause that i I just want to say that i feel like people think that like the art teacher assignment is probably so fun like i feel like the first time you see that assignment come up you're like oh my god this is gonna be a great day fun. and then no, it's gonna be the worst day of your life it is i hate to say it but i'm gonna be honest gonna with be you treacherous <laughs> the second grade class that day was very loud and very busy while i was walking around the tables i felt something at my elbow it took a minute to process what was happening this child was massaging the skin on my elbow, like really working on it. As weird as it felt, I didn't pull my arm away because she was just so calmly doing it and kind of just in her own world. (laughs) This reminds me of my toddler. (laughs) Anyone who's not around kids is probably so confused right now, but like I completely understand what you mean. I asked her if she ever does this to her parents or the regular art teacher, and she said, oh yeah, all the time. It's just really soft and I like it. The two working brain cells I still had at the point in the, that point in the morning had a little heart to heart, and I realized that this was grounding to her. So as uncomfy as it was, I don't know, it felt nice to be a safe elbow for her. Kids, man, there's something else, and I dig it. I love that. Before I was a parent, I would have been like, that is so fucking weird that you let a kid rub your elbow. But now as a parent, if Jay wanted like, to rub somebody's elbow skin and it brought her comfort i would be like moved to tears that this teacher let you would be like in the school meeting and be like we actually do need this accommodated can you put this on paper somewhere i'm so annoying but i love you You want more Reddit? Because we got more Reddit. Okay. I got yelled at over something so small. I just started to substitute teach because the school system is so slow and everything. So we use this app called Smart Find Express. That sounds like a grocery store. And it was my first time using it and I was mad confused. I only had two jobs last week and they were not even six hours or more. But I took like a 20 minute break for lunch. Well, apparently I didn't enter it correctly on their dumb app because I got a long ass email about how I didn't take a full 30 minutes of break full 30 minute break like be fucking for real and I tried to explain it to them and they just brushed me off they were so quick to tell me instead of explaining that I needed to take a 30 pin 30 minute unpaid break it felt like I feel like it wasn't that big of a deal but they definitely sure did maybe they should focus on fixing the dumb app oh my god t um this one says this is a story about diabetes and my brother is type one so you're somewhat of an expert on the topic. Um, it says, I was subbing in a fifth grade class. Two of the kids had diabetes and lied to their parents that I wasn't following their medical plans. I had a student with diabetes in my class when I was teaching full time before I had kids. So I was very familiar with the medical plan and procedures. They were just mad that I wouldn't let them get away with messing around, throwing a football down the hallway, etc. The parents called the AP in an outrage and she called me and said I could try again in a different class. Bullshit. I am a certified teacher with years of full-time experience during a sub shortage that was being paid way too little to put up with that. I immediately emailed HR and asked to be taken off the sub list. I mean, valid. Yeah. And that's like a big allegation. Yes. Like, that's illegal. Like, don't weaponize your shit. You yeah. Know? Then that turns into shit like where my brother needs accommodated and then like can't get accommodated because people are like questioning everything that he's asking for like does it have an ulterior motive and I'm like don't do that yeah and that's a hard thing as a teacher when people do ulterior motive it because then now I have to ask and I feel like an asshole asking because you shouldn't have to ask and it's rude to ask but unfortunately other people have put me in a predicament So for this episode, we got to sit down with a substitute teacher who went super viral on TikTok. She goes by Actually It's Katie or Actually Autistic Katie. 
and she's going to tell us about her super viral video and what happened at her sub assignment. Let's dive in. I first came across you because you came up on my For You page and I saw you were in your car talking about a teacher and a lot of people in the comments section had a lot of feelings and I was like... (laughs) To be fair, most of the feelings were good. I've gotten so many DMs from people who were either that student or have met that teacher. The overwhelming response has been positive, but it's not that fun to respond to those comments. So, no, it's not. Oh, I know exactly what you mean, Katie. The shit has like floated to the top and it's like, I posted it on Instagram, which I never do. And it was a bad idea because I immediately got a comment where someone was like, you're such a piece of shit and you don't know what it's like to be a teacher. And yeah, and I was like, I do a little bit. Like I've had one long-term assignment that was like three and a half months long. It was at an underfunded school. I had no support from admin. I would go back in a heartbeat. I miss those kids. I always thought it was so weird when teachers were like, yeah, I love my kids. I'm like, that's a little weird. And then I would like four days in, I was like, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Just kidding. Yeah. That first group is so special also. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, so that story blew up. It's insane. So tell us about your viral video. Tell us who, what, when, where, why. So a couple things happened happened when it was happening part of me was like because it was it was not a white woman shockingly so I was trying to check my internal biases and be like am I just projecting that she's doing things in a way that I wouldn't do or anything like that and that kind of made me wait longer but mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing because I saw enough stuff to be like, this is definitely not okay yeah. and be able to go report it. The aftermath of that was very interesting. The day it went by, I posted it the following day and I was like, no one's actually going to watch a five and a half minute video of me eating a sandwich, but we'll see. It turns out they did. That used to be my entire content when I was pregnant. Yeah, and they have a lot of feelings. And if they didn't share the fil- feelings, it wouldn't go viral and we wouldn't do it. So <laughs> Exactly. Anyway. And I'm like, I'll take Keep it. Keep having your feelings right here. I couldn't watch because you were chewing. So I was real nervous about even doing it later people were like no you're like a mandated reporter you have to tell people when stuff like that happens and I was like okay I'm glad you said that because I was honestly feeling like I was maybe overreacting or something but it was it was like I was worried that if I said something she would like lash out at me and I was like kind of like frozen in place for a lot of the time and I was trying to like kind of be like well you know and she's like no (laughs) never mind (laughs) You're like, I'll go, I'll go fuck myself. I'll go lay down. Right. (laughs) Yeah, I'll just go flush myself down the toilet. It's whatever. But so that night, another employee messaged me and said, it's worse than I thought. This woman had cussed her out in front of kids and she had gone and like she would scream at them. She would fight with other teachers in front of kids. She would cuss and there was already a a kid who had been removed from her room about two hours four hours maybe before I reported her that other employee had gone and reported her so it was two reports in one day That'll which do made it. a lot more sense because literally I went I had my little breakdown in my car and then I came back and what I had told her was I don't know if she's supposed to be in the professional development all day I don't know if you guys want me to because a lot of times they only need me for a half day but like they pay for me to be there the whole day so they want me just there as support and I was like I'm not gonna be in that I cannot be in that classroom. And they were like, oh, well, tell us more. Tell us what's going on. They were writing it down. They were very apologetic. They were like, she's been here like a week and a half. She's a long-term sub. We haven't even had a chance to evaluate her yet. And I was like, I I get it. Like, I don't think you guys are the worst. I just can't be back in that room with her. So then when I came back, they were like, go take a lunch. And so then I came back. They had put me in fourth grade, but they were like, if you want to go back in that classroom with those kids, you can. She has been removed from the building. Those were the words they used. Oh, that's a really specific verbiage. Yes. Like, not just she left for the day or anything. And I'm like, did she fight you? (laughs) Removed? (laughs) By whom, Stu? (laughs) She's been removed from the building. And like, when I made the video, I kind of like wrap it up real quick. I was like, I was like, long, long story short, I went to the principal and like reported it or whatever. And then the caption I put, because I posted it the next day, and the caption I put, when I came back, they said she'd be removed from the from the building so I'm assuming she got fired and then the like at the top I put like TLDR got a teacher fired today and I just like put that out and the amount of people who are like well what happened well did you report her well was she fired oh <laughs> and my I'm God. just like so you're right they did not watch the five and a half minute video of you eating no they didn't watch the five and a half minute video they wanted to know this woman's address they wanted to know her name Yeah, that was crazy to me they wanted to know the school and i was like you know i would get fired so back to the mandated reporter thing guys right <laughs> protecting children is a thing i have to do by law and if i dox my 
school that I was subbing at that day. Then I'm doxing the kids. Yeah, hello. Yeah. So unfortunately, they did – so they did that day offer me a long-term position in a different grade. And I decided to take it because I had heard that the admin was really great. I liked their quick action. And I was like, I'm, I'm into this. I went. I did one day of it. And then I was home the next day. And I see all these texts, like, about my schedule changing the next week. And I was like – I think I just got reassigned and I go, I wonder if someone saw a video and maybe was not a super fan of said video. And so I called and I was like, hey, she's like, hey, I just wanted to talk to you. And I was like, is this about the video? She's like, yes. So they called and they did ask to mark you as do not return. <laughs> but they said that it has nothing to do with your teaching, that you were lovely. They really like you. Apparently, a couple of the other teachers saw it and it made them uncomfortable. And you know what? they don't know what kind of stuff I post they don't know if a lot of teachers post kids like a lot of teachers post stories about their co-workers that could get back to them and also I'm kind of recognizable I talk about my walker in that video I've got a pink apparatus that I'm like pushing around everywhere and so parents could recognize me they could have seen the video and be like that was this school and then like call and be mad and well no one told me well it wasn't your kids you know that kind of thing so I totally got it and I like I didn't have my feelings hurt on it or anything I was like whatever but the next assignment I had I walked in and immediately the office manager goes oh my god I saw you on TikTok and I was like okay I want to die <laughs> like I was at an assignment the other day and the admin who was working with me super sweet she was lovely but she was looking at me funny the whole time like she's like have you taught here before and I was like nope it's always like no you from somewhere I always say I have one of those faces I have been trying to kind of casually bring it up with admin at new schools I go to because I don't want the kid because the kids are gonna find it and it's happened I've shown up on kids for you pages yeah same it's jarring which was fine when I was in that long-term position because my kids were very protective of me and they would snitch if someone was following me because we could have real conversations I was there long enough to be like hey guys it's inappropriate for you to have an unsupervised relationship with a teacher so hindsight 2020 would you post it again I think so because I'm having a good time with it and honestly the comments about my appearance I couldn't care less about because I know the truth which is I'm very cute and I have a husband who looks at me like I'm Aphrodite yourself so I just don't yeah. care and and like, oh, I don't like that you were wearing yoga pants and a hockey jersey. And I'm like, I was chasing third graders, so I don't care what you think about what I was wearing. I check the dress code before I go to schools. Like, I don't show up and shit I'm not supposed to be in. So I would post it again. I would not have been able to handle the attention three, four years ago when I first started posting stuff. I had a couple of videos go viral prior, and it would usually end in some sort of autistic meltdown. <laughs> and like, I'd have a video go viral, and my husband would be like, all right, so I'm gonna make sure we're stocked up on like safety snacks and paper plates because <laughs> someone's <laughs> staying in bed for three days <laughs> like, like I want to hear a little bit about like so you had that one long-term placement but what's kind of been your journey in education like how'd you get here why'd you get here this is the craziest story you guys want to know what got me into teaching yes, yes. so friend of mine three and a half years ago we'd been talking she was working in legislature for like a lobbying group and she it had been kind of a special interest of hers and she was just kind of getting disillusioned she wasn't enjoying it and we became friends on tiktok and i had been talking and she sent me a video of a tiktok teacher who went by miss redacted oh my god stop it was me and she said i went to college with her I think I'm going to get into teaching. You already know who I'm talking about. I do. She's been on this very podcast. Just, I think I'm going to get into teaching. And I was like, I wish I had gone into teaching. She was like, I think you would have been a good teacher. And I was like, I wish. But I was on this like weird tech journey. I ended up in ad sales and it was glamorous. <laughs> destroyed my mental health. But... I bought a house, so, you know. Seems like a fair trade. I would also <laughs> succumb to the ad sales universe yeah. for a house. So. But she'd been teaching about a year, and I was like, girl, how's teaching? Do you love it? She goes, I do love it. Also, you're going to be a teacher. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you need, you need to do this. This is perfect for you. You and I are very similar. And I was like, yeah, in another life, I would love to. Then I was working at Peloton, and I got laid off. And I remember she messaged me. She was like, okay, so now, perfect time. And I was like, no, I'm going through interviews at this company that my dad used to do something with or something interviews didn't go great I met the CEO of that company at my dad's wedding and I got to bully the shit out of him I was like remember that time you put me through six weeks of interview hoops and then you guys suddenly didn't have the position anymore and he was like it was you wasn't it and I was like yeah it was and he couldn't run because we were on a boat not on a boat my dream is to bully a CEO on a boat there's no way for you yacht. to go we were on daddy's yacht <laughs> and he and I got to yell at him. No, it was fine. I was like, it's, everything's fine now. I found my life's passion. 
But yeah, and I was like, I don't even know how I would do this. And she was like, Google programs right now. And she walked me through it. And yeah, so Tati was like, you, you've got to, you, you need to be a teacher. And I found the program, brought it up to my husband. And he was like, we don't have kids. We don't have a lot of debt. If you're going to switch, now's the time to do it. And I did it. But yeah. So Tati says hi. I was talking to her the oh other day. God. Episode five, everyone. Mm-hmm. Episode five. <laughs> Episode five. Yeah. So that's my like crazy. I'm not someone who usually believes in like manifestation or like kismet. But this whole thing happened and I was like, OK, just kidding. I give up. I guess we're manifesting. It is happening. Gosh. So the internet knows you as like a substitute. Are you also in a program? Yes, I am in a program. My agency that I work for has a nonprofit that subsidizes your certification and master's degree if you decide to go masters and I'm like four more credits throw it on there I guess I also have like I'm very privileged to have like a college fund that when I'm not in school it starts building up again I've got like a 529 love a 529 any parents out there open up a 529 for your open kids. a 529 do that open a 529 a 529 is an investment account so that money is not in cash it's like invested into like stocks or whatever the fuck you get like really good tax breaks on it because you can take it out tax free yes and spend it tax free if you're spending it on qualified stuff which is like exam stuff so my dad had one he's got three daughters he had one for each of us yeah because you have to name a beneficiary of it and it's like for education of that person yeah so it's if there's money in it it keeps going and I don't use it it goes to my kids oh I didn't know that part it goes to his descendants cool it's very cool so like my younger sister she used it for uh esthetician school my older sister went to AMDA. You don't have to, like, it doesn't have to be very traditional. But yeah, it's, like, kind of for any any training education stuff. Theater kids? We're big theater kids. I knew I could <laughs> smell it on you. Yeah, you could. And that's one of the reasons that I remember I was sitting down with my dad and my stepmom. Because anytime I want to do a new thing, I have to bring it to him because he does hold the keys to the 529. <laughs> I was like, this is what I'd like to do. What do you think about it? And my stepmom asked a great question. She said, why do you think you'd be a good teacher? Not why do you want to do this? Why do you think you'd be good at it? And I was like, you know, every job I've ever had, I end up in some sort of teaching role, which is not always something I enjoy because I don't get paid to be teaching people. It's just like, Katie's really good at this thing. Go match up with her. Mm. So it's not like I got like a pay bump, you know, and I, I said, I enjoy teaching. I have unbelievable patience when it comes to if I understand why someone is struggling. I have really good patience. If I don't understand, then my patience is very thin. But with kids, I get why you're struggling because you're kids. So it's like- I'm the exact same way. Like when kids are struggling, I'm like, you're very small. We should not be expecting this of you. But when an adult who should be able to handle it, I'm like, don't even look in my direction. Figure it out. I get so frustrated when adults are like, are you like this with your students? And I'm like, no I'm not but you're a grown person with a full frontal lobe who is feigning ignorance right now or choosing ignorance worse right I was talking to Casey Davis a while back we were talking about how like people will say like should a therapist really talk like this and she has to be like you know I'm not your therapist <laughs> like that's not what this is this isn't better help you're on the wrong app and I feel like people do that to teachers they're like I can't yes. believe you're talking like that as a teacher and it's like I'm not your teacher like, I'm at home right and I'm now. not your kids teacher but one of the things I said that I think would make me a good teacher is like I was like, I got, sh- I got showmanship, man. And I think you need that. I think you got to be able to entertain kids. I was a theater kid who went into sales. That's one of the reasons I was so good at sales. You're the greatest showman, if you will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I would just call me P.T. Barnum because I could spin it. <laughs> and the Actually, show is I going on the road. It made me sick to like sell to people who didn't need something. And I had a therapist tell me we need to get you in a new job or a new career if you're having like thoughts of self-harm or, or, or ideas of self-harm. And I was like, I'm, what are you talking about? I'm not. And she's like, Katie, you willingly got your tonsils taken out because you found out you'd missed two weeks of work. That's not normal. And I was like, that is You're like, I think that is normal. how that went. What a good call out. This is why I pay you the big bucks. Shout therapist. out to Ellen. See, I need a therapist that's noticing shit like that. Every therapist I've ever had is like, have you tried taking a deep breath? <laughs> But yeah, so I think I think theater kids make good teachers. So how long have you been subbing? I started this year. I started in July because for some reason they decided to start a bunch of schools in July here. Yes, they did. It was very strange. It was so hot. It was like 117 degrees, which was terrible because we had indoor recess always. The first week, they right away said they were going to put me in a long-term position. And I was like, I don't know about that. You're like, sounds pretty high commitment. Do you have any, yeah, I any hop like, around. minute by minute decisions I could make. Right. And I also wanted 
high school, they don't have a lot of high schools they work with. They have a lot of middle schools. And you know what? I'll take middle school over elementary any day. I don't know how you do it like elementary because I can handle a teenager. I can handle a middle schooler. When a middle schooler is a dick to me, it's like, I get it. Your body's at war. This has nothing to do with me. This is your problem. I can level with that. Obviously, people have individual traumas and issues, but if a 10-year-old is being a jerk to me, it's like, dude, I don't know if you know this, but it doesn't get better than 10. Only like, down from here. This is your prime. You're about to go through a lot of shit. You should enjoy what you're doing right now. Once I hit about 30, things were great again. But Literally. I turned 30. I was like, this is great. This is the age I was meant to mm-hmm. be. I was meant to be 30. That's how I, I was feel. having that conversation with my students the other day. I'm 26, and I was like, from age 13 to 25, I was violently mentally ill, and they were like, it's going to last till I'm 25 (laughs) and I was like it's fine they were like it's not even half over you won't totally get that though you won't know what's happening I was like 19 will be the worst because you won't know you're mentally ill you'll think you're fine and that's a fun thing about middle and high school is I can be a little bit more real with them Mm -hmm. and so my plan is to get my single subject secondary in social studies because I don't have to take like any exam for that because I have the degree in sociology nice but I kind of want to get dual certified in English language arts as well because I taught English language arts, seventh grade for four months. And this could be a hyper fixation. I don't know. We'll see what happens when I'm taking classes, (laughs) when it's time to take exams. But it like rocked my world. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. These kids had no interest in reading and they were so behind and they gave me no curriculum. I didn't have credentials. I couldn't, I didn't have access to the grade book. I was there four months. That's insane. I was supposed to be there the whole year, but they had like a hiring mix up and suddenly they had an extra teacher. Wow. But my first school that they put me at they were like seventh grade science and I was like not super excited about middle school but we'll try because I really want to do high school and you know what the kids were great this school to they put me on a second floor with a broken elevator I have a mobility aid I have a walker I don't know if this is like a post-covid thing or if this has always happened because when I was in middle school bell rang you just went to your next class yeah they want us to walk kids to their next classes and take them to lunch something had to have happened. i have seen that in a couple of middle schools before i don't think it's the norm but i do think that that happens yeah and so now i'm a lot more assertive because i ended up working somewhere for a week and a half almost two weeks where they were like any day now it's gonna be fixed and for like almost two weeks i gaslit myself into carrying my walker up and downstairs and I could probably sue with the damage I still feel from that. I'm so sure you yeah. could. My last school didn't have a fucking elevator or like anything like that. How are you supposed to bring like supplies and stuff up? You have to lug it. And I was I was pregnant at the time with like a I have a pelvis issue and mm-hmm. I was busted by the time I was on maternity leave I it was horrid but one of my kids was on crutches for a time and called the school and was like what do I do like the classroom's on the second floor and they said just don't come to school for two weeks I guess feels illegal oh a hundred million percent it's not legal but I was like what's happening so I'm so sorry that happened that's horrible yeah it was rough but my agency that I work for Mm -hmm. spectacular because I finally called and reported and they were like girl (laughs) you're not going back there and actually we might investigate and send no one there until we figure out what's going on. Um, I have a question for y'all because I have noticed something that was not a thing when I was a kid. It might be a demographics thing because I went to very white schools in Arizona, but I always called my teachers Mr. Last Name, Mrs. Last Name. But the schools that I work at now, the teachers will say Miss my last name when they're like, greeting me in the morning or whatever but other than that it's miss yeah yeah i think that's becoming more common as well yeah teacher or miss i don't get teacher as much because i'm old because my kids are older yeah i get miss a lot also it's like a language thing yes Mm -hmm. more so at my previous school that had a lot more english english language learners at my new school i still get it some but i also my last name is spelled weird and hard to pronounce so i also kind of chalk it up to that i've seen it really depends because senora or maestra is like really normal it's not disrespectful i get really pissed when teachers are like oh it's so disrespectful and I'm like it's not it's not that serious yes people don't like it and I'm like who cares like kids will say if I hear miss I'll go who said my name I feel like especially as a sub because you're coming into new environments right and they don't always know my last name I write it on the board 
or whatever. Some kids like to call my last name starts with a W, so kids like to call me W, and they like to make jokes out about it, and they'll be like, "You're a W teacher, miss," and I'm like, "I'll take it." <laughs> but is there anything you else you want to share with the teacher quick talk community about subbing, about your experience with that teacher? Anything you want to share with the world? Subbing is, I think something that if you're thinking about teaching I think you should sub first because you get to experience so many different grades and so many different subjects they send me all over my county but I get I get exposure to a lot of like things I just wouldn't have exposure to a lot of cultures a lot of um, subjects a lot of ages that so far have just like reinforced my decision about what age I want to teach but it's nice to know yeah you know and get that experience and plus like working with kids of different ages will give you different skills that you can apply to the environment you want to be in absolutely so I think I think if you have the opportunity to sub you should but I don't think you should do it if you don't like kids and I've met too many people who do it who don't like kids and the kids know they can tell they know kids can smell bullshit and if you don't like them don't be there a word of advice to everyone that is my subbing mantra i want to look up the average pay that's what i want to tell the people before we depart let's look up the average pay apparently the average in california is 19 dollars an hour the average in texas is 16 dollars an hour in arkansas it's 12 dollars an hour less than ideal for sure Uh, Thank you for subbing. Thank you for teaching. Thank you for having me. I really do think that people should get their asses in classrooms more often. Mm -hmm. It's jury duty. Get on in here. Or like a career change. If you're just curious, if you want to help out your community. And literally you can do it for two weeks. And if you hate it, no one's going to be mad at you. A hundred percent. As you heard from many of these stories, that is not an uncommon experience. So don't feel like you got to ride out the year. Well, thank you for joining us. And thank you for everyone for listening to Teacher Quit Talk. Give your subs a high five and a thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Just as a disclaimer, because I am someone who is actively teaching, everything on this podcast is my personal opinion and does not reflect my district, my state, my employer, my students, or my admin. Everything on this podcast was recorded on personal time, on personal equipment, and is a completely separate endeavor from my school district.